we are now in a position to take everything that we learned about the theory and practice of uh, memory devices and actually set out to build chips that implement all this uh, functionality. So project three begins with all the chips that you designed in projects one and two, as well as a primitive uh, data flip-flop that uh, you can use uh, as you see fit. And based on these uh, building blocks, we have to build the following uh, uh, chips. We've seen all these chips in one way or another in the previous units, and now we actually uh, implement them. Now, most of these chips, all of them except for uh, uh, the program counter, uh, constitute a family of increasingly uh, complicated uh, sequential chips, beginning from a one-bit register all the way to a RAM device that contains a, a more or less 16,000 registers, 16K uh, 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 registers. So let us begin with a one-bit register whose diagram and uh, documentation is, is repeated here. We've discussed it before. Here is the stub file. There's nothing special about it. And uh, the implementation uh, is something that Noam described in, in previous units. So you can just follow up uh, uh, what is written here and build this, uh, uh, this chip in HDL. Moving along, we can take a set of such uh, uh, single-bit registers and build from it a 16-bit uh, register. Uh, the HDL is shown here, and uh, all you have to do is create the right wiring, and uh, what you have is a 16-bit uh, register. So now we are ready to uh, uh, move on and build uh, our first RAM device consisting of eight registers. Here is the uh, uh, API of this uh, chip. Here is the, the stub file that describes its input and output uh, uh, pins. So now that we have all this information, let's figure out how we can, how we can actually build uh, such, a, such a RAM device. So I can give you two uh, uh, very important uh, tips. The first one is that you have to take the in value and feed it simultaneously to all eight registers, uh, so-called at the same time. So you use HDL statements to fan out this, uh, this uh, incoming value and, uh, and send it to all uh, the registers in the RAM device. And then you use some MOOCs and DMOOCs uh, logic in order to select the exact register that you want to be affected by the respective read or write operation. So once again, you send the information to all the registers, but only one of them is going to be selected using uh, uh, this MOOCs and DMOOCs functionality. Now, I want to leave you uh, the details uh, because uh, otherwise uh, uh, you won't be uh, sufficiently challenged, I think. And uh, with these details, you have everything that you need in order to, to build this, uh, this RAM device. Moving along, uh, we have implemented uh, the first three chips and we are ready to, uh, to construct uh, the more uh, elaborate uh, RAM 64, 512, uh, and so on uh, chips uh, in the hierarchy. So this is our next task. And here is how we do it. We start with the RAM chip that uh, uh, we just discussed, and we stack together eight such uh, RAM chips, and what comes out is, uh, or what results is uh, what we call a RAM 64. We can take eight such uh, RAM 64s, put them together uh, to yield the next uh, chip in our hierarchy, which is RAM 512. And we can do two more steps uh, of a very similar nature and end up with uh, the most uh, uh, elaborate uh, RAM chip, uh, the one that we have called RAM 16K. So we basically repeat the same, uh, call it uh, recursive ascent, if you will. And, uh, and by using this, uh, this strategy, we can build more and more elaborate uh, RAM chips. Now, how do we do it? Well, uh, first of all, we note that a RAM device can be built by grouping together uh, smaller RAM parts, which is you know, an HDL description of what I did before in this diagram. And we can think about the address input, which is not shown here, but you know, it's in the background. We can think about the address input of every one of these chips as a binary value that consists of two logical fields. One field can be used to select the exact 
RAM, RAM part on which you want to operate. And the second field can select the very register within this RAM part that you want to affect by either reading or, or writing uh, something into this uh, register. So taken together, uh, this, uh, 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 these two tricks can enable you to build uh, RAM devices of arbitrary uh, length. And you use MOOCs and DMOOCs gates in order to affect this hierarchical addressing scheme that I just uh, described. So once again, you have here enough uh, tips to, uh, uh, to enable you to complete the implementation on your own using HDL. <coughs> So this uh, basically completes uh, the uh, construction of the uh, uh, RAM devices. And uh, we move on to construct the last chip in this project, which is something completely different. It's a, a program counter, uh, which is just a fancy name for a counter. Uh, it's, in fact, it's not a fancy name. It's, it's, uh, it's called program counter because later on in the overall construction of our computer, it will serve as a program counter, but effectively, it's, uh, it's, it's just a counter. It has uh, uh, an input value, it has an output value, and three control bits. Now, the overall behavior of this uh, uh, counter is somewhat elaborate. We discussed it when we talked about counters before. Uh, I, I want just to emphasize uh, the four most important things about it. Uh, this being a counter, we want to be able to set it to zero. We want to be able to uh, set it to some other value, like 17 or 19 or whatever. Uh, we want to be able to tell uh, the chip to start counting, to change in every cycle into uh, whatever it was before, plus one. And in some cases, we want to tell it uh, perhaps to stop counting and uh, uh, freeze, uh, so to speak. So uh, what you have to do is to come up with uh, with the right uh, uh, functionality, the gate uh, logic that affects uh, every one of these uh, four operations. It turns out that you can do it using uh, a register chip, an incrementer chip, and a bunch of other logic gates that were previously described. So taken together, uh, this is what uh, you have to do in, uh, in project three. Uh, as usual, you go to the uh, NAND to Tetris uh, website and you will find uh, the uh, project uh, webpage with uh, lots of uh, additional uh, uh, operational uh, details. Uh, once again, I want to emphasize for the third time in this course that uh, if you have downloaded the course software suite, there's no need to download anything uh, uh, in addition. Uh, this is just for documentation purposes and um, you already have all the necessary files on your computer in uh, the directory project slash zero three and you have your hardware simulator and you're set to go and, and build all these chips on your own. As usual, uh, it makes sense to uh, consult these resources when, when necessary. And finally, uh, all the best practice advice that uh, uh, was given in previous projects is relevant here as well, so you might as well read it before you uh, set out to build the project. And in addition, uh, as usual, you will have to use chips that you implemented in previous projects, and as I explained before, the best practice is to ignore your HDL implementations and use the built-in implementations instead. Finally, there's one more point that I'd like to uh, emphasize on this project, and that is that the HDL files of this project are stored in two separate directories called A and B. And uh, this structure should remain as is. Now, why do we do it? Well, if you recall, our RAM uh, uh, devices are built from smaller RAM parts, and, and the smaller RAM parts are built from even smaller RAM parts, and it goes on and on, it's like a Russian uh, 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 doll uh, system. And uh, if you take one of these huge RAM chips, let's say a, a RAM 16K, and put it into the hardware simulator, the simulator begins to evaluate all the uh, uh, chip parts and it does it in, in some sort of a recursive uh, drilling uh, downward all the way down to uh, single bit registers. And uh, it turns out that this can be too much, too much memory or too many objects to handle for, for the hardware simulator, which is just a humble uh, computer program. 
and therefore, by putting the registers, uh, I'm sorry, by putting these RAM chips in two separate uh, 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 directories, we force the simulator to, at some point, stop using the HDL files and use uh, and, and start using the, um, uh, the Java implementation of these uh, built-in chips. And this, th this will make the implementation, or I'm sorry, this will make the simulation uh, much faster and uh, smoother. So please just leave uh, uh, the directory structure as is and uh, you're set to go. So this has been uh, uh, a description of what you have to do in project three and as usual, uh, we will now turn to uh, the next unit in which we give you some broader perspective of the notion of memory devices.